Hello, beautiful muses, and welcome to Monday Musings. I'm Kelly Bonsell here with Uma Joy, and we are so excited to just be in conversation and share that with you. And tonight we are talking about the busyness of this time of year um, and what we can do to bring in some space, um, maybe with a creative practice or thought process or something, what, what happens when we need to, to build in that space. And, um, and so I have lots of things already bouncing around in my, in my mind about that. But Uma, what do you want to share about this? this um, you know, the, the first thing that came to mind is, yes, this does tend to be a, a full or busy time of year. And I reflect back on different times in this past year. And it's not just when holidays are coming. You know, it's like all of a sudden different things just every everything wants my attention and it's like wait a minute i can't do them all and um so when we started talking about having this conversation around this today just the fullness of life and you know a creative process came to mind in terms of okay putting them all out there what needs my attention and then how am i manipulating it to say all right this has priority Or how do I create a schedule that um, one of the things that I do when I have a lot of things on my plate is I try to make like three hour chunks and all right, just focus on this one for three hours and turn off my phone, you know, sign on the door. It's like, you know, the muse is the muse is busy, you know, um, or whatever. And so just looking at different different ways, because it continually happens that oh, it all is due right now, or it's all wanting my attention right now. So that's what's coming up for me on this right now. Yeah. What's going on for you? Yeah. Um, Well, I want to first acknowledge that we have a couple viewers here with us. And if you'd like to chime in on uh, what this busyness in general or the season and sort of how you're able to maybe – find space or just anything that's coming up, we'd love to hear from you or just say hi in the comments. Um, That would be great. So welcome and thank you. And one thing that just, so you were talking about kind of building and you had mentioned when we were talking about a topic for tonight, like showing a process, an intentional Mm -hmm. creativity process. And uh, in that moment, when you said that, I was like, that's just one more thing. Hi, Guru Dharm. Good to see you. Hi, Guru Dharm. And, um, and I was like, that's just one more thing, like this intentional creativity process to figure out about the business. And, you know, but as you were kind of, as I was visualizing doing that, like sometimes just putting it down on paper, whether it's on a list or a moon plan, which is what I often will use, mm-hmm. or like just an intentional, I mean, just getting it out of your mm-hmm. system, that creates space. Mm-hmm. You know, it really, really does. And I mean, if you have paper and you want to share sort of what you were, you know, showing, um, that could be helpful. Or I think also we can understand that just that idea of putting it out onto something like when you go to bed at night and you've got that list running, I have multiple things that I do now, but I used to have to like write it down, you know, before I, before I forgot it. So Yeah. And, you know, there's lots of ways that I think about doing, you know, what I'm talking about in terms of an intentional creativity process and um, done them many times and there's no right or wrong way. But one of the one that comes to to mind for me is it can be almost like a spoke with balloons all over. And so here's, you know, if it's a central project that has a lot of different pieces on a project then I might put them as balloons coming out. And it might also just be that, all right, here's a lot of bubbles floating in the air. And how do those, you know, kind of work their way around? And what I have found at times when I've done that is 
you know, yes, you're saying, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, here's one more thing to do. And yet once I get started on that, and if I just focus on it and even add some color to it and make it an intentional creativity, you know, process. And for those of you that aren't familiar with that term, if you haven't been with us before. So when we're doing our art or anything in life, we want to put um, intention to it. If I'm cooking dinner, you know, here's the intention that I'm putting into with love and how am I wanting to bring this this nourishment to mine or other people's bodies or gardening. So putting our intention into it. So with this intentional creativity process of finding space and I put everything down that is calling my attention. <laughs> there have been times it's like, there's not enough room on the page. There's so many <laughs> things, but then the bubbles can actually just sort of pop. And you know what? This really isn't that important right now. That can go on another page or it can come back at a later time if it really needs my attention. And it just seeing it. Yeah, I don't have to carry it anymore. It's kind of like yeah. so much of what we do with intentional creativity. If you just put it on, you know, the, the dot on the painting, the, the, the mark across it, you don't have to carry it with you. Yes. And it makes a difference. It does. It really does. You know, I'm thinking about, so I mentioned moon plan. So I do like, we learned from Amber Bonici, um, this like moon plan. So I, every, the new moon and I sort of divide it up and it's not, that doesn't really hold like my to-do lists, but it holds like what energy I want to bring in. What is something that I've been wanting to bring more of into my life or what's mm -hmm. an inquiry that I want to hold throughout. And so and sometimes I add to it and sometimes things move from the last moon into the next moon. But what it does that relates to what you're saying is that once I put it into this moon plan, it's holding it for me. So I don't have mm -hmm. to constantly be thinking about like, oh, yeah, remember, you're thinking about, you know, courage and bravery this month. Like, oh, oh, don't forget, like it holds it and I can look at it and I can be reminded and I know that it's it's there. And it's such mm -hmm. a interesting shift in my energy just to know that like when I get to that the end and I'm kind of in that like you know final phase of the moon and I'm sort of reflecting on what happened and did I and you know mm -hmm. but the but I know that it's like been threaded through and it come it'll come up in conversations that we yeah. have and creative practice and I think it's because I've like placed it with intention mm -hmm. and in a creative way to do that mm -hmm. and um and I'm thinking before this call, we were talking about like, oh, we haven't even had time to do as much creative practice as we've wanted these 21 days, you know, and or spend as much time on it. And even with the, my my Monday, I do a to do list, kind of like what needs to happen in the week. I could just as easily take that page and make these circles that you're talking about and let the line sort of discover, mm -hmm. you know, and feel into it in a different way. And yeah. it would take just the same amount of time and it would feel so much more nourishing than mm -hmm. just my little bullet points that I, right. that I do. Yeah. Yeah. In days past long ago, I mean, I was a major list pers uh, person and I had my lists and I'd check them all off. And, and I, with habit, sometimes I will go to do that. And it's like, it feels so dry to me now. And even if it is getting out my markers and different pens and like saying, do it a loopy loop and over there. And, you know, I can still bring beauty, fun, playfulness into that list as opposed to this is what I have to do. And right. um, it, it changes. It changes the mindset. It does. The other thing that does. you were just saying about when we write it down or when you put it on your moon plan or you hold that energy, I think that a lot of times once we do that, it also talks to the subconscious and the subconscious tracks it for us. Even if I don't see it every day and refer to it every day, that subconscious is tracking for me and noticing and allowing it to come up in yeah. ways that maybe I would have missed it before. And yes. uh, so I think that happens too. or, you know, going to, to sleep at night, you know, it's like, okay, 
So I don't need to hold this all night, but I'm putting that energy out and I can set it down and my mind will figure out the answer while I'm sleeping. Yes. And I don't have to fret about it before I go to sleep. Okay. So I've got to do this tomorrow. How am I going to get this done? How am I going to, you know, just write it down, be done with it and let let that other yeah. part of me work through the night while I get to sleep. <laughs> right. I have this practice. I do at night and it's amazing. And I feel like I've heard, I like used to do these guided meditations to fall asleep. Um, Cause I was having a hard time sleeping. And, and I think I've like put together some of the things that I heard from those, but I have two things. Cause I definitely go into that thinking mode when I lay down things that are just those random thoughts that don't, I don't really need to like bring into the next day. I imagine just this cloud, right. And it just like, just drifts away. And I really can like feel, and I think it's also the visual. And again, this brings in like, the, like the visual practice of like, you know, the creative visual part of it, but I imagine it right. And that visual, mm -hmm. like seeing of it, like I can feel it moving, but there are those things that I would put on a list in my previous self, like, and now I imagine a balloon. And so the string is still like tied. And so the balloon floats off. So the thought is not, doesn't need to be carried in my mind. But the fact that I visualize this tie with the balloon, I know that it'll show up for me tomorrow in the way that it needs to show up. And I just feel like calm or something that I'm not going to forget it. Like I remember, and I think I might've shared this with you. I think it was before, right before we were starting our 21 days and I was getting so excited about different things. And um, so I was laying there in bed and I was thinking, and I was like, I can't keep thinking about this. Like, I'm not going to be able to sleep. I'm so excited. So I had this balloon and it was like iridescent and it was glittery. It was like full, you know, and it was like, it was just light coming from it. And it was like, I knew that that energy was going to be held there for me the next day. And I could just let it float off. And it really, helped me to like get a good sleep and still be excited the next morning. Like, Oh, get, there's my balloon. Here we go. Mm -hmm. You know? And, mm -hmm. um, that's been just such a fun, I mean, the creativity that can come without even putting pen to paper, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and doing that. And, and I see Guru Dharm shared that finding, she's finding that having the balance of creativity is supporting the tasks, um, that need to be done. And I mean, that is so true. Like, mm -hmm. and maybe that leads us into how do we make the space, allowing that space to come in so that we can do those creative practices that, that support mm -hmm. us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of, one of the things for those that haven't done or aren't doing the creative uh, 21 days with us, or if you haven't done today's, I mean, that was part of what today's, prompt was all about was making that space and um i love the the ideas you brought to the table on this kelly in terms of a creative process that's meditative um and just allowing and you know the movement and just being present to the moment without making it a task um it was really beautiful and there was something I was going to say about that as well. And it just went out of my mind, but we'll start with that. one. Yeah. But, so yeah, that it was just really a delight to do that, that process and some that we've done before um, in other situations and whatever. And it's, you know, just taking that time. Yeah. Oh, the other part of that, that I was going to say is sometimes, and I was thinking about this a lot last night, um, not as I laid there to go to sleep, but before bed, and I tend to be more of a night person, which the later I go to bed, the later I wake up. And, um, and it's, it's shifting more lately that I am going to sleep earlier. And it's like, you know, it would not hurt you to get up at this particular time and just have that time to do whatever you're wanting to do. Sit in quiet, breathe journal do a a three or five minute doodling drawing whatever it is and just you know 
make an appointment with my day. And I've come back to this a number of times, like put it on the calendar, make an appointment. Just like you're going to meet your friend, you know, for a cup of tea, you'd show up. Well, meet your best friend for a cup of tea at, uh, you know, seven o'clock in the morning or whatever time and show up. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that. And I feel like there's been so many times and I think if, if I could bring that routine and that commitment, which I think I will at some point in the near future. And I wish that, you know, I have high hopes that you will do um, sending that energy away, but it's not something that is easy for me right now. Mm -hmm. And so I think about, you know, like doodling, you know, or um, just like on a little scrap of paper, right. While you're waiting for the water to boil or whatever and how like all you have to do is bring an intention into that. And that little one minute, eight minutes, however it takes the pot, you know, like, I mean, that can be come something really sacred just by mm -hmm. putting that intention into it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think that like, just, I think I do that more than I realize. And I don't mm -hmm. give it the credit that like it really mm -hmm. deserves and maybe if I bring not only the intention of like, oh, this is like a little meditation, but the intention of I'm doing something for, for my creative self and this is sacred and yeah. letting it fill me up and letting, you know, myself feel good about like doing that, um, that could, that could create that space. That could be like the opening mm -hmm. for this like scheduled time, yeah. even, you know, well, one of the things that you just said that I really want to to underline, and that is, I truly believe that we do it way more than we give ourselves credit for. In that, in truth, Kelly, this is the way we live our lives. And we talk about it, you know, every week, whether we're on Facebook Live or you know, a different time of the week when we have a, a meeting between each of us or between the two of us. Um, for those that you, of you that don't know, Kelly lives in Texas. I live in New Mexico. And because we do these collaborations, it's really lovely because we, oh, darn, we have to meet and talk about what we're going to do. Um, and so in those conversations, we witness that it is the way we live our lives. Are we perfect? We're perfectly imperfect, um, <laughs> you know, and so there are things that we were in these human bodies. We keep trying to do or we keep doing the best we can in that moment and we keep learning and growing and, you know, it can always be more and yes. it is really, really good where it is. Yes. And, um, I, I feel very, um, Honored, pleased, um, empowered by who we are as individuals, as the work we do together, as the work we do with our beloveds. It's really sweet. And yeah. we keep doing the best we can. It is. Yeah. And I appreciate like the acknowledgement of that, mm -hmm. I think, is part of that creation of space and that witnessing of what we're doing and um, you know, like almost just stepping back from yourself and being like, look at that thing you did. <laughs> you know, that was, that's it. You're doing it. Cause when we just get caught up and it's just the doing and the doing and the doing, and even if it is part of the busyness and it's part of your job or it's part of parenting, it's part of like, just like stepping back and be like, all right you know like I did that and there were, I had something today with my kids I can't remember now what it is but I did I was able to like step back and be like way to go mom you know and just like yeah. feel that so um yeah it makes me so happy I feel like I'm getting all teary because it makes me really happy and really like what Guru Dom said Dharm said is that you know it supports the tasks, it supports everything else when we do this and we're able to, um, to, to recognize it and to, to honor it. And yeah. 
and share it, being able to talk to you about it and say it. And uh, yeah, that there are these things like that's amazing. So mm-hmm. thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, there's, we've spent enough time. We in a, a large sense have spent enough time being hard on ourselves or letting other people dictate being hard on us that unfortunately sometimes then we take on. And I love seeing that that happens less and less and less. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It's really sweet. It is sweet. Yeah, it is. So we, yeah, we're at our time and, um, I just, anyone who's watching this, first of all, thank you so much for watching, whether you're live or you're seeing this later. And if you have joined us and you've been, you know, fitting in the 21 day practices um, in whatever way that that's working for you and feels good and nourishing and supportive, thank you. And if you haven't, and you are wondering what we're talking about, it's not too late to sign up. Um, you know, we're on day 13, but all of those practices are available to you to start any time. We were kind of centering around finishing on the solstice, but that's just, you know, the energy of that will continue, you know, beyond yeah. the actual day of. So please, please join us and start seeing how that, that creative, mm-hmm. consistent practice can, can help you feel supported. Mm-hmm. And in, in, uh, Another piece of that is this is a complimentary offering that Kelly and I are offering. And um, so there's no charge and we send it to you every day in your email box. And um, the post or the, uh, the link will be below this video if you don't know about it. And the other thing for whether you are signed up or not, for those that are signed up for it. Um, this Thursday night is the third of three weeks um, on the creative musings that we do every Thursday night. And we have offered that as an extra bonus for those that sign up. So that is free. And the 21 day practice, and I use the term free, but I like the term complimentary because we do a lot of work putting it out. <laughs> and um, fortunately, we love what we do. And so it's yeah. it's been a pure joy to do all of this. Um, but I like the word complimentary. So you're too. welcome to join us for the 21 day practice. And um, if you sign up for that, you also have one more Thursday night that you can come to the creative music class with us and um, have fun, play. Yeah, yes. And one more thing with it. We have this beautiful YouTube channel <laughs> that is new to us. And all of the videos that we've been sharing for the 21 daily practices are on there. Also, all of our previous Monday Musings conversations. So if you gain something from this and you want to hear us talk about something else, um, and, you know, feel free to comment and share too, because we were checking that out and seeing how how people are enjoying those videos. So um, Creative Musings with Uma Joy and Kelly Bonsell is also our YouTube channel. So you can... Watch it and subscribe if you want to see more. And we're so grateful for your support and for just sharing this creative light with us. So thank you. Indeed. Peace and blessings. It's always a joy in being with you, Kelly. Thank Thank you for those of you that have joined us. And uh, peace and blessings. Good night. Good night.